Hello, and welcome back. So up to this video, FreedomFi only did traditional helium mining via LoRa coverage, though these miners were designed and manufactured with the intent to also provide 5G coverage. So this video will cover what you need to set up 5G, how to set it up physically, and if you're looking for more background information on why 5G on helium, how it works, what's the profitability, and where you should place it, and all those kind of extra questions, check out the video in the description below called Why 5G on Helium. So what do you need to mine helium via 5G? So currently, the only miner available that supports 5G mining is FreedomFi. Think of this like a meter to track usage and route data. Just like you'd park your car on the street and the meter tracks your usage, it would also track the 5G and LoRa coverage that's being provided. You'll also need a CBRS small cell radio. And that's the thing that receives the signal from your phone. Now, Please note that the only current available small cell radio is an indoor one from FreedomFi. Outdoor radios will be announced and I'll do a separate video on them later. There will probably also be other manufacturers coming on board. So again, watch for more videos. So to test the, the, all of this setup, or even to use it, you need a SIM card and a phone uh, capable of eSIM, which I'll link uh, in, include a link in the description to a list of supporting phones and that both GigSky and uh, FreedomFi have that listing in the links that I'll provide. Phone plans have not been yet announced, but two providers so far are GigSky and Dish Network. So Dish also owns Boost Mobile, Ting, Republic Wireless, and has agreements with AT&T while Dish builds out its own 5G network. Helium. So to do the testing for this video, I was given a two month usage, uh, two month unlimited usage plan, which you can re-up by five gigabyte increments for $59.99 at any time that you'd like. If more providers and agreements are announced, of course, I will add them to the description below and you can check out those videos and any, any further things that I try and add back to the description or in a pinned comment. So let's take a look at the physical setup of the equipment necessary for mining 5G coverage via helium. Here's your router. You'll notice I have a cord coming out of the back, coming around and coming into the FreedomFi uh, miner. And then that is coming into the WAN port. So coming in on your WAN port here, then your ENB1 goes out to your small cell radio. There's power coming from there. And that's on the 5G side. So if you flip around to the other side of the miner, it might be a little more difficult because I'm going to watch my cord space here. So this is the LoRa side. So you can see I have uh, an RPSMA coming out here, going across, and up to my antenna. So if you've followed any of my other videos, you'll know very well how to set up these antennas and what you'll need. So this is a 3 dBi antenna from Rack Wireless, and the cable that I was using is just an indoor um, rated cable just for the, this test. So then that would do both coverage. Now, you'll also need um, a phone that is equivalent for uh, eSIM support, and then this SIM card that is provided is just for freedom fi testing you can't get rewarded via the coverage it produces but it's part of the beta testing that uh, freedom fi is doing you can also use the stock antenna which is included as well if you don't have an antenna so let's cover the small cell we're coming out of the enb1 port on the freedom fi miner which is right here and then going up to the indoor small cell now the indoor small cell also has a GPS antenna, which for right now and the purposes of this video, I've put up on the up next to the an antenna right here. But that is to get a GPS lock, and that is required for 5G coverage. And then looking at the bottom of this, you can see that we have the yellow cord going to the LAN port. The LAN port is only used for uh, at time of manufacturing a power and GPS. Now this power can also um, 
actually get PoE from via this port. So a little addition there. Now one thing I'd like to cover specifically on the indoor small cell are the lights at the top. And you can see from right to left here, we have the WAN, which means, yes, it's connected to the miner. Of course, power, need that. Sync would re relate back to your GPS lock. And then LTE, which basically would mean that it's supporting 5G coverage. Now, all of these lights are, are required to stay on, and then you would be providing 5G service or 5G coverage. One additional piece of equipment I'd like to recommend is a UPS. It's an uninterruptible power supply. So what this use, is used for is in the event of a power failure, you would still be able to provide 5G coverage as long as your network connection is up. So this is awesome to provide that extra coverage. Of course, this has the dependency that you would need power backups at all points of your network. Every single line, your router, all of that. So if your router is plugged into just the wall, you're not gonna get it. Let's do a brief overview of the entire setup. Here's a UPS providing power in case your power goes out. On the right here, we have a router providing your internet connection to your Freedom Fly Miner, which is also connected up to both a LoRa antenna providing LoRa coverage, and then also your indoor small cell, which is providing your 5G coverage. Also, you'll need to connect up your GPS antenna to provide that GPS sync. And of course, you'll need a phone that is compatible with eSIM technology, and that's all the equipment. If you need more information on how to set up your FreedomFi setup, FreedomFi does have a few guides out so far. So they have one for the gateway or the miner, one for the CBRS indoor small cell, and then one for the mobile SIM card, which they included, which is just for testing. There's also a data sheet available on the small cell, which I'll include in the description. Links for all those, those guides. So the guides have more details and screenshots of the Helium app. You'll of course need power and uh, power connection and also a connection to your router to supply internet to the, to the device. There will be some initial onboarding steps and then it will get syncing for a couple days if your miner is not caught up to the blockchain yet. And then of course it will it could take up to 24 hours to fully sync your uh, indoor small cell. Please note if you disconnect power, it will stop syncing and will gradually get farther and farther behind the blockchain. So for the LoRa setup, again, it's much more like any other miner. I'll link my original Freedom 5 unboxing video and a video of setting up with another antenna, which then you can even go into like, how do you choose? Uh, new antennas and, and verify that they're working. Of course, you can go with a stock antenna as I showed or swap it out uh, also like I showed uh, for any antenna that matches your local free frequency. If you already have another LoRa miner actively mining, you want to power that off and in about a day or two, it will fall off the blockchain and your proximity score will go or your transmit scale will go back to normal. I'm unaware at this time if you can do LoRa mining outside the US with the Freedom Five miner. I don't believe so because it would it would uh, not provide the right frequency for the LoRa side. But in case you had the same frequency, maybe. Um, but the point is, is that you can't do uh, 5G coverage outside the US with uh, this indoor small cell. So for more information on setting up the small cell, everything to connect the small cell to your miner is included. You get a power supply, ethernet cord, and a long cord with a GPS antenna on the end. The small cell needs a GPS lock in order to operate. It's highly recommended that you get the GPS antenna in or near a window. It does do PoE. However, an injector is not included. You'll also need to connect the ethernet directly from your miner using the WAN port not the LAN on the small cell. As much as I'd love a different physical location for the small cell from my miner, it appears this won't be possible. Whether that's just now or forever, I'm not sure. For the indoor small cell, you wanna place it where you have the best line of sight for people to use, use their cell phones. Another important aspect is that data usage will be limited uh, to the size of your supplied inter internet. 
from FreedomFi's FAQ on their website, most CBRS cells will have the maximum down length throughput of about 150 megabits per second. So if you have a decent internet connection, it will not swallow all of it. You'll also have the ability to set a ceiling data throughput that you dedicate to the data offload, which basically means you can log in and configure how much uh, data you want passing through your small cell. For instance, if you have 150 megabits per second internet plan, you'll only be able to provide that amount of 5G service. So plan your data usage accordingly. If you do a small test and usage is capped, then you may want to consider upgrading your bandwidth. Keep in mind, many business plans start in the one gigabits per second range and then start putting in language based on usage rather than bandwidth. The unique setup on, on these small cells is that you can have a, a switch and add a bunch of small cells in case you need to cover a bunch of rooms or just go beyond the range of a small cell. If you have just one small, small cell, you can just connect it to the ENB one port on the Freedom 5 Miner. Let's go over the problems I had during setup. Even though I had purchased an unlocked phone, many carriers will keep their phones locked. So when I tried to start the Gig Sky app, it stayed forever on the splash screen. It never proceeded to any further screen after that. I called my carrier to have the phone unlocked, and after they completed unlocking, I restarted my phone and was able to start the Gig Sky app and go through the configuration steps. Now during configuration, even though the instructions seemed simple, I messed it up. Though they, they talk about uh, setting up your primary and secondary lines correctly, you have to kind of copy some paste, copy and paste some uh, information from you know one screen to the other. And so it's good to have the guide up or have separate screenshots to walk through through. I tried to just like pause where I was and go over to this screen and then come back and I lost where I was at. So it may have not even configured correctly. Uh, and, or entirely on my phone as of yet. One other note is that if you have security scanning on your network, more than likely that will impede traffic as it's in inspected. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe. I'd love your feedback in the comments below. I always try and pin a comment if there are any corrections after the video is made. Till next time, Carpe Tempestus.